What is up, Scrub Fan? Pat here, back with a update to Clash of Fates Goku, Clash Coup. Uh, it was a favorite deck of mine at the start of set seven, but kind of fell by the wayside. I know one did pretty well at nationals, but for the most part, it kind of felt like a tier two deck, and it felt kind of gimmicky because you were just kind of playing for the Kaioken Goku Defender of Earth. I noticed that there were some other builds that were a little bit more aggressive, but I didn't really feel like they were quite there. With Series 8 and the introduction of some new cards, especially some of the green cards, I feel like Goku can kind of actually get in the mix and, you know, kind of hash it out with some of the more aggressive and mid-range strategies. He kind of can do it all now. He can put out quite a lot of damage early on, and he still has Kaioken uh, Goku Defender of Earth as a big late game bomb. So again, just seems really good, and I really wanted to revisit him and do an update for Series 8. This is a drop area abuse deck, as you guys can see from the thumbnail uh, and the title of the video. What that means is that it is a deck that is going to heavily abuse uh, effects that come out of the drop area or when cards go to the drop area. So I felt like Goku as a burst leader was perfect for this. Before I actually get into the actual deck profile though, I wanna give a huge shout out to Alec Pastrana, our sponsor here at 3XG Productions, as well as Shenron's Lair, Alec Pastrana, beardedcollectibles.com, the best shop owner on the planet. He is gonna give you guys the best prices on sealed product for Series 8. Get those pre-orders in, guys. It's about a week and a half until product actually starts shipping out. So yeah, definitely get those in. If sealed product is not your forte, then he has play sets available for you guys as well. So you can guys definitely take advantage of that again beardedcollectibles.com he's going to give you guys the best prices so with that out of the way let's just jump into the deck profile real fast sun goku legendary super saiyan front side burst two you can discard a green card to draw two cards this definitely fills the discard pile up really quickly so we're going to get a ton of cards in the yard really fast untap two when you're at four or less life bottom uh, bottom here back side sparking five when he attacks you uh get to draw a card then if you have a krillin in your drop he gets 5k and double strike so really aggressive leader on the back. He can put up uh, you know, quite a lot of damage with his double strike ability. Uh, biggest problem before was that he just didn't have uh, a good early game that would let you capitalize on that ability. I feel like with some of the strategies, or I should say synergies in this deck, you will definitely be able to take full advantage of that, get your opponent's life total you know, low much, much quicker. So yeah, let's just jump into the card choices. Feed Kamehameha, since we no longer have to rely on Defender of Earth, Sun Goku, uh, Kaioken Goku, to win the game for us, we actually have a game plan that can win us the game in four turns with an aggro strategy. Feet Kamehameha is no longer just like a great, you know, 15k, 10k that tries to hold us on, uh, hold uh, on to more life. We can actually, you know, get into the mix with this card early and late game to basically steal games. It's still really, really powerful, and I feel like with the way that we have set up this deck it's perfect at two next up is focus breakthrough this is the card i was talking about before uh this is one of the green cards that really helps green leaders a lot in series eight it is a counterplay that lets us basically discard any card that's entering <clears throat> excuse me that is three or less that includes topo righteous aid so if you are an aggro deck or an aggro player you probably notice like hey i hate it when i start to swim with my huge board and they topo and shut my whole turn down. Well, this is basically a zero cost card when you're at four or less life that turns off the topo. You don't have to pay for this. You could just take a life and just get rid of the topo entirely. This is a really strong card. Uh, if you, you know, basically if your opponent plays like Super Saiyan, Vegeta, Exploiting Weakness, to try to blow up your board, you can just be like, no, I'm gonna focus break through that because it's a three drop when it's in window one, which is exactly when this kind of card would resolve. So yeah, focus breakthrough gives green leaders quite a lot to be happy about i think that the blue one and the black one are also equally ridiculous um the sprs for these cards i think are going to be the chase cards of the set because they, these counterplays are just incredible they're just they're amazing if you guys are not aware of how good these are just give them a try start playing with them and you'll realize man these are amazing they're so good that i'm even playing them in android 21 now so Next card, for the greater good, uh, it's a drop negate. Our leader can mill this card off of burst. Uh, we can also pitch it with our leader. It's just straight value. Just negate from the drop is great. Again, we're a drop area abuse deck. We just want to abuse as many strategies and synergies from the drop area as possible. Shocking Death Ball, uh, it's our sparking negate. You, you kind of need it when you tap out. It's not particularly like an amazing negate, but you just, you're green. You don't have any other options, so... 
Next up is Chi Chi, Motherly Majesty. As long as you have two red or green multicolor energy, you get to draw a card. Whenever you combo with this card, it's a 0 5k that draws a card. So it's like a mini super combo as long as you have two red or green energy, which is super easy to do with this deck with the amount of filtering you have and the number of dual color cards. Uh, also it makes it so that Arrival is really good. It also lets you shotgun people for some pretty impressive numbers right out the gate. And the fact of the matter is the way this deck is set up, Anything can have double strike as long as you have one red energy open at all times, including your leader who's naturally double strike. So Chi Chi lets us hit those big numbers when they actually matter. Next up is Broly Everlasting Vengeance. We have a lot of discard outlets, including our leader. Uh, we also burst, so just milling this card is just free value. To be honest, I think this is the worst card in the deck. It originally was the card next to it, which is Beerus Destructive Villain. How Beerus Destructive Villain works is he has he is a two drop 15k, when you play him, if you already have another Beerus in play, they discard a card. It doesn't work on the first one. It's uh, each other one, I believe. Yeah, when you play another Villainous card. So they will all trigger. So if you play four of this card and you somehow get all four of them in play, your opponent will discard three, which is pretty cool. But the main reason you play it is because it has the ability to choose a card with Beerus in the name that costs three or more uh, and pick it back up. So it is basically personal preference which one of these cards you want to play in here. Uh, I originally had Beerus in, in there, but you know some of the guys were thinking it might not be that good. And to be honest, Broly Everlasting Vengeance isn't particularly good either. They are this is more like a flex spot. If you want to play like two Overrealm cards in here, yes, I know you're a Sparking Leader, but you could you could play two One Drop Killings, whatever you want. Uh, I you just kind of wanted to use Broly Everlasting Vengeance here to kind of illustrate the point that. Uh, there are a lot of discard outlets in this deck, and there are a lot of ways to put cards into the drop. So having the flexibility of just having a 15k that you could always keep playing from the drop when you have nothing better to do, or you just want to hold up counter magic in the, the later parts of the game, uh, it's pretty good. And again, Beerus is just, you know, card advantage on a stick. <clears throat> so next up is Defensive Stance SS Vegeta. Because we basically put three cards in the drop every single turn, uh, it's super easy to get sparking online. You basically will always have it by turn two. Uh, against like say like Janimba, you'll have it turn one, so you can go super aggressive. It's usually better than the life super combo like 95% of the time. I think only against like Super Baby is this guy actually a liability and worse than the other super combo. <clears throat> Next up is Broly Demonic Origins, check land for red green, so that's why we're playing it. Next up is Great Ape Son Goku Saiyan Instincts. So as we will start to illustrate when we get to the other parts, we have a lot of cards that discard. Uh, this card can also just get bursted off of your leader and it's just straight value. This is a draw to you spell that activates from the discard pile. And we have tons of ways to put cards into our discard pile other than just paying for, you know, just comboing the card away. Again, you could get it off burst two, you get off topo and you can get it off Krillin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So next up is Beerus Godly Majesty. Beerus Godly Majesty is basically the reason why I wanted to build this deck. I read this card and was like, wow, this is insane in a burst leader. It's insane in anything that requires you to discard a card as a cost. So auto, when this card is placed in your drop area from your hand by a battle card skill, so you can't use it off your leader skill, if Beerus Godly Majesty isn't in play in your battle area, you may play this card from your drop area. So what does that mean? It means that if you negate an attack with Topo, Righteous Aid, you have to discard a card. If you discard Beerus Godly Majesty, he just comes into play. So you're paying two energy to stop all of your opponent's attacks for a turn. You get a 20k, you get a 15k. That's insane. That's absolutely not so value. Um, it, at that point, you're basically Topo is even more broken than it already is normally. So that is one reason to play the card. And then it has activate main green, send this card from your drop area to your warp. Choose one card from your hand and place it in your drop area. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of three or less and KO it. So if you burst this card at any point and it just happens to go into your drop, it's free removal for one energy. Just pay an energy, pitch a card, boom, blow up a card. So your leader naturally is ju just has removal from playing the game normally. Like you just on deck always have some sort of removal from the drop area in tandem with other things like great ape Sun Goku and for the greater good and Broly you start to see that a good chunk of our deck if we mill it it's still live it's like it's in our hand so using the drop area or the graveyard discard pile whatever you're gonna call it as a second hand is a really popular strategy in a lot of card games especially games like Magic the Gathering. Uh, strategies like this are usually incredibly powerful and amongst the best in the entire game. 
uh, as we get more cards that function similar to this Beerus Godly Majesty and Great Ape Son Goku Saiyan Instincts, you start to see that there's some really silly synergies and you just have options at all points. Vegeta the Cruel, standard green counterplay. It's just good. It kills a guy that's four or less, gives us a little bit of control, staves off aggro, lets us play a more mid game or control the playstyle against certain decks where they definitely can't go over top of us. We can kind of just roadblock them, slow them down with Vegeta the Cruel and the Beerus Godly Majesty in our discard pile. Things like, you know, uh, uh, veggies, things like that. You just basically get to roadblock them until you go big and go over them. Krillin Steadfast Defender, we generate a lot of cards in our drop area, so this is uh, usually a two cost when we play it. Two cost, draw two, discard one, and again, if you pitch either Brawly for the greater good, Saiyan Instincts, or Beerus Godly Majesty, it is just straight plus. Uh, we also play Final Showdown Sun Goku as a surprise finisher, uh, surprise mid-game bomb, so getting Krillin out really quickly uh, into a final showdown is pretty good for a aggressive to mid-range strategies and it's also really good as a control strategy that shuts down those decks that trying to only play like one bomb such as maybe Hatchiak for example. Next up is Topo Righteous Aid. Arguably the best negate in the game right now next to Dimension Magic and Flying Nimbus. Like it's just a really not so card paying two to basically fog almost every day all the uh, cards in your opponent's hand. I usually refer to it as two mana time stop, which is broken. Obviously, if your opponent has a ton of cards in hand, they can keep going, but usually the more your opponent overextends, the worse off it is for them. The fact of the matter is when you play Topo and discard either Saiyan Instincts or Godly Majesty, the amount of card advantage you're just getting off that is nuts or, or field advantage. It's just, it's just nearly insurmountable for a lot of players. Uh, and it's just, you know, this interaction here, Beerus with Topo, and Krillin with Beerus, like that's the main reason I want to play this deck. There's just, you have lots of avenues to just abuse free pluses and overtake your opponent in terms of field and card advantage. Next up is Champ and Beerus, Capricious Gods. So this is, originally was in here because I wanted to maximize Beerus Destructive Villain uh, because we could basically do both. But I quickly started to realize that even though it can, you know, some things it can't hit, being able to arrival this card for one red when we have things like Chi Chi and Topo is like red combos that are free and then our, our super combo is green. What that means is since it can give double strike on top of it, anything like our leader normally is double strike. So most people will negate our leader, right? They're going to be like, oh, okay, I don't want to deal with the foot Kamehameha shenanigans of the leader. So I'm going to negate it. Then you go in with like a Vegeta the Cruel, for example, and then you just, they say no negate, you have one red open, they're at two life, you just go boom, Chi Chi, couple Chi Chi's, couple defensives, arrival, give Vegeta the Cruel double strike, kill you. So this card lets us turn any beater, even like a Broly Everlasting from the yard, if we have this card in hand and enough combo power, lets this turn, uh, this card just lets us turn any battle card in our, uh, our deck into a relevant threat that can end the game. So yeah, you're basically double strikes the name of the game. Uh, we're gonna be able to get in there for double strikes quite often and quite early. So yeah, uh, just really, really strong, efficient engine. So I was talking about, it's a little bit of control with the removal and the double strike is actually relevant and lets us game people like an aggro deck out of nowhere. So this Goku deck can pivot to the extremely aggressive early game kills and it can also pivot to the late game control oriented strategies if need be. Final Showdown Sun Goku, when we're leaning more into the control strategy, uh, we can basically just sit back on a bunch of Krillins. Uh, our opponent's eventually going to have to attack. We can be selective, block, use Final Showdown, kind of blow up uh, whatever bomb they have. Uh, you can probably play this at two pretty safely. I decided to start it at three, um, and I'm thinking about moving forward, probably cutting it down to two, but it's still a really good card. It's really solid. Um, we're less burdened with this build than the previous ones in terms of dual colors. Uh, and because of focus breakthrough, I feel more confident in tapping out with this leader than I have previously in the past because I know I have a panic button that's very similar to like a dimension magic that can potentially halt a game ending bomb. Uh, that is because usually again we're we're pretty aggro in this format, and again a lot of the higher cost cards are usually reduced to three or less anyways. So yeah, I feel much safer playing this card. All right, so next up is Kaioken Sun Goku, Defender of Earth. So I needed some self-awakening in the deck and there wasn't that much room. Uh, and Sun Goku 
Uh, Defender of Earth is still a really broken win con. Yes, it's pretty easy to play around now. A lot of people are accustomed to it. They champ at the Trickster, whatever have you. So it's not like the end-all, be-all. Um, and I feel like playing for this card is a mistake. It, it doesn't work. A lot of people are just used to that strategy, so it's not really going to work anymore. So I still wanted it in the deck, though, because we need self-awakening. And if our opponent is just going to leave us a high life total to you know not play around focus breakthrough they don't want us to have the double striking leader for whatever reason maybe they've t overtaken us in card advantage we can drop this card down uh go right under four life start using our double striking leader aggressively and potentially win the game if they don't have the answer to it so yeah uh this is no longer the focal point of the deck like it used to be in the past like the whole deck was just built to just try and kyle ken your opponent now we're a much more aggressive mid-range strategy that just happens to be able to play kyle ken because we're in the colors and if the game goes that long, we can just jam it and just basically reap the benefits of it and get a free win. And next up is SS3 Scramble, Raditz, Vegeta, and Brawly. We're red-green. It's the ultimate in the colors, so of course we're going to play it. Uh, the best thing about this card now, though, is that if we can save our Awaken, uh, or because I say our opponent kept this really high and we were at like 4 life or 3 life coming into our turn and we haven't yet awoken, you can swing combo into play this awaken and then drop champa and beerish capricious gods and give anything that's attacking double strike before it was leader gets negated because if they have scramble you could just game them four to zero out of nowhere with capricious gods and holding your awaken you can basically game them with anything so everything is a lethal threat at four or less as long as you have five or more energy or six or more energy so yeah basically really really good card in general is what i'm trying to say <laughs> So there you go, guys. That is my updated Clash Coup deck. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think it is pretty good. I don't know how strong it'll be competitive-wise. I don't know if this is going to be like deck of the format, but it's something new and something interesting and exciting to play. And it really gets me, like these kind of decks is what really gets me ramped out when a new set comes out. So hopefully this is something I can kick around at my locals and won't die out in two weeks. Uh, because it's like got some crazy exploit. So yeah, just experiment with the shell guys like Topo and Krillon with Beerus and this like, little ape Goku and even like for the greater good are just they're just silly amounts of value. I'm sure other leaders can take advantage of this stuff too. So just again, start brewing, start thinking about the card pool, actually like look at the cards. This cycle of cards, like the Beerus, the Goku, the Trunks, and the one hit wonder uh, SS3 are all really good. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some really degenerate broken combo out there with them just because they just have these free-to-play conditions with additional effects in the drop. Again, drop area abuse is really, really stupid in most decks and is amongst the most powerful things. All right, so that's it for me here at 3XG Productions. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I know that Frisco and Zap are working hard on some other deck lists. Uh, hopefully you guys get to see those next week. I know Frisco has this really, really sweet uh, Kaioken Goku deck for you green-blue players that don't want to play Androids next set. So definitely look forward to that, guys. Uh, as always, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. Leave a comment. Let me know how I am doing. Uh, if there's anything else I can improve on, any other decks you guys want to see, any other crazy ideas you want to pitch to me, as always, you can just shoot me a message on Discord or Facebook. I'm always open to it. So yeah, that's it. Bye!